yeah. So Christmas presents is my topic. Ooh. It's the season to give and receive. Indeed. It's the season to wrap and to unwrap. I'm much better at unwrapping than I am at wrapping. You're not that good rapper? Not that great of a rapper, no. I'm a good I'm a good rapper. I would say I'm a good rapper. I'm not as good as opening though, so you're probably better at me than that. You yeah. probably open a good present. I'm probably just kinda oh, yeah. I just kinda throw it at stuff and hopefully it unravels. <laughs> open up, stupid. Kicking it throughout the house. I wrap it so well, you know, it's just so so damn tight, you know. I just go straight for a samurai sword and then just slice and hope that nothing precious is in the package. Slice and then you slice it open, and then you broke your new samurai sword. Yep. Oh! Why my Hattori Hanzo? <laughs> Um, Jokes on them. The Hotori Hanzo sword won't break. So, you know, when you get older, yes, you have to be responsible. You have a lot more responsibility than me about dishing out some Christmas presents. True. Uh, you have a lot more uh, siblings and and people you have to buy presents for. Um, Correct. I do not, but I still have some priorities on top of that. I mean, I definitely have some gifts I have to to be mindful of and it can be kind of stressful very um you though i mean i don't know how you do that i mean do you i'm so do you does your family do um what do they call it they uh not secret yeah secret santa when you pick a name out and you just buy a gift for that one person or do you buy gifts for everybody no so basically that is how all of the extended family does it in houston <laughs> Um, and I failed my, my immediate family this year, but I'm going to work on this at some point and figure out a way through Google to streamline the process. What my family does, and I think we have briefly talked about this before, is basically everybody just submits a Christmas list to one big email chain. Okay. And then it becomes the arduous process of everybody deciding who's going to buy what for who and having to update the five or six other people and leave out one person saying, Hey, I got this for this person. Hey, I got this for this person. And you got to start a chain of like eight different text messages, making sure that you leave out the right person so that, you know, blah, 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 doesn't know who's getting what, even though we have lists. So we all have a general idea of what's going to be coming our way for Christmas. Okay. Um, so when I say that I'm going to find a way to streamline that through Google docs, I'm going to find a way to condense all of that communication. And hopefully make it much easier for Christmases to come. It's takes away a little bit of the stress because it's not like I have no idea what to get this person. I'm trying to frantically shop like, you know, what, what would be a good gift to get this person? But it's also very stressful to have to hold up all of that communication. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that's that's how it works there. I... I'm becoming more. I mean, I, I, I seem like a good, I did a Secret Santa with uh, extended family one time before, and it worked out well. And all I did was just buy him a gift card. And, I mean, to a place they liked, and I said, "Here you go." I don't know what the hell. I mean, I, I don't see you often. I don't know. I just kind of got a hint what you like, sort of thing. Here's a gift card to it. I don't know. I mean, which I actually, I mean, like, I feel like a lot of people like if you buy someone a gift card, they're like people will be like, "Really, you just got him a gift card." But for me, I love gift cards. Yeah, me too. Because it's just like, you're gifting to me free money to spend at a store that I really like. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because, I'm fine with them. Yeah, Absolutely. I prefer to shop for myself, to be honest. Yeah, it's great. Um, and that's another thing with that is, I, don't, I haven't done gift cards in a while, but which kind of relates to what I do now. I, for a lot of presents, unless it... I don't buy many objects anymore, which is really funny. Um, you know, my, my inner family is just, you know, two people for me i don't have any brothers or sisters so you know if they want a book or a cd or something that's small like, no big deal like i can get something like that but i like unless they're asking for something like not just them but like if you asked something i really want this yeah i would buy that for you because you really want this one thing but if right. i'm if you're just saying i want to get you something for christmas i usually don't buy an object unless it's like it's again, like something small, book, T-shirt, something like whatever. I right. spent by 10, 15 bucks on this tops, so whatever. Um, but I've noticed that because so many objects I've given people over time, they don't use it anymore. It broke. It, it got lost in the move, or they it just it's stored away somewhere and they never see it or use it. So I just and also too, my folks, you know, retired. They're trying to get rid of as much stuff as possible. You know, they've lived right. in a house and now they're they, they've condensed, so they're they're. 
they're getting rid and rid more stuff, and I don't want to buy them stuff for Christmas. They don't need stuff. They, that's the last thing they need is stuff. Right. Uh, and I, I mean, I feel that pain as well because, I mean, I, I usually on my Christmas list, it's like things that I need. Um, but just don't, you know. See, that's a great. See, yes, things like, that I need. You give me socks and underwear as a kid. That's stupid. But now socks and underwear, I right. need that, man. Right? Are you kidding me? I need that like crazy. But but also, and and con- conversely, it's the same thing, right? Like I'm kind of in the same boat because I'm gonna have a move coming up in a couple of months. Yeah. And if people are trying to give me like, not that they would, floor lamps or rugs or anything like that, I'd be like. That's really nice. Uh, I, I definitely could use a floor rug. It's just I'm about to move. I don't I don't know well, that I'm going to have a floor rug space when, in the next apartment that I go know, to. You never know, yeah. And then you get in your poop place and you have this giant empty spot. And like, damn, I could have used this floor rug right now. Really should have kept that floor <laughs> rug. <laughs> I, I just... Uh, I, well, here's another thing, too. Going with the object buying. Um, I had great advice uh, from a friend's ex-girlfriend. This is a long time ago. I say friends girl. They're at the time they were together, but not anymore. Um, Makes sense. She told me, which I think is a fantastic advice: is if you're struggling to buy a gift for someone, and I'm talking about someone you you know pretty well, buy them the present that you know they would want, but they would never buy for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it could be gimmicky. Or it could be cool, or I maybe mean, not something they need, but they, you know they would like it, but they were like, I'm not gonna buy this for myself. Look at the price, or I'm not gonna buy this for them. This is, I don't need this, but it we buy it from like, oh my gosh. Right. I, like, it just, that's, that's the trick. And I think that's really good advice. That is. Yeah. So I give you like your katana. I know you want a katana, but you're not gonna buy yourself a katana, but I buy a katana, like, I got a katana now. You know what I'm saying? True. True. That would be awesome. See? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't buy you a katana, by the way. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Christy and I, I think, are still planning on buying each other machetes from the zombie apocalypse course. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Very excellent. Very excellent. Um, I think um, another... I that was a very, like, uh, we were both, like, after the zombie apocalypse course, we're like, yeah, we should just get each other machetes because friends would get friends machetes. Oh, and that's one thing yeah. that we forgot to talk about for, like, two months. I think we've done the show for th- three months. And this is episode 12. This is three months we've been doing this now. Three months. That's four weeks, yeah. Four times three, yeah, 12 yeah. months, yeah. Yes. Um, because I'm just, I think there was Episode a Episode 12 about. appropriately is for Christmas in December. Who knew? <sighs> December's the 12th month? I don't know. I'm just trying to make tie-ins. Anyways. It, it worked. What were you yeah. saying? <laughs> um, we're not going to talk about it now because we're on this topic, but we I think we don't say this for a whole other topic. You have to talk about, you never talked about on camera your sur- zombie survival training. Really? You said you were going to it, but you never talked about what you did there. You never talked about... It was a secret. We actually killed several zombies. Um, and I've just released a secret. They're probably going to kill me now. Well, either way, you could talk about it until we can all teach the masses and how to kill them. But anywho. Anyways. On a, on a less bloodier note, because it's Christmas. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, I'm saying Spread this on camera because I want to remember Take this. I want anger. you to bring that up. I want to talk. I want to know what you learned on the zombie uh, survival course. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyways. Gifts. And things. Yeah. I, uh, I like, for example, like, uh, for, was, even though it's not Christmas, it was a birthday present. Uh, you know, Johnny got me tickets to the Blackhawks game. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. I took you to a Bulls game one time. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Um, events. I think sporting events or uh, a show, a concert, or a theater, like, those were good gifts, too. It's just the only problem with that is dates. Right. Like, you want to buy them, like, like, hey, I got you tickets for this show. This, I'm going to be out of town that weekend. Shit. Right. Yeah. If it doesn't line up with schedule, it's never a good thing. Yeah. There's ways around that, though. Yeah, I'd say so. I say, um, well, you could do the old, like, what are you doing this weekend sort of thing? Are you free this weekend? Make sure you're free this weekend. <laughs> um, That's definitely dropping a major hint about something. But, I mean, if you need to, you need to, right? How would you do it? How would you do it? I, I don't know. But I, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, you're definitely dropping a major hint about that specific weekend. But I think for safety purposes, you kind of have to. Follow um, it up with, don't worry about it. Or, or well, I've actually done this before. You, you have tickets, but they're not real tickets. And say, tickets to... Uh, six flags, and then you we find the date, and then I buy the tickets. No, wait, what do you mean? Fake tickets? 
Okay, so I like give you a card, right? Okay. In the card, it says like a note in there. It says two tickets to Six Flags on me. And then we find the weekend to go, and we go to Six Flags, and I buy the tickets when we go there. All right, that could potentially work. It's just that wouldn't work with like a sporting event or a concert. Sure, it could. Let's just say two tickets to a Cubs game. You find the day the Cubs game you want to go to, and I get the tickets. Okay, but a concert. Concert would be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But otherwise, yeah, that's a that's a good workaround for a sporting event. Yeah. Yeah. God, you're being a negative <laughs> Nelly right now, trying to find spread peace and joy to find how to do this. You're like, nah, that wouldn't work, Blake. Nope. Kinda. Sure. Dark side. <laughs> Bastard. Um Yeah, I um what about making gifts? You ever make gifts? Probably not since I was a kid, to be honest with you. Maybe you should do uh, that this year. <laughs> Just yeah. like freak people out. Like, I made you a popsicle <laughs> ornament, popsicle stick ornaments. What the fuck, Danny? <laughs> I built you this stepladder. <laughs> use it wisely. I would use a stepladder. <laughs> yeah. Don't step on the second one, though. That's, that Ooh. step is dangerous. I ran yeah. into nails. <laughs> I, uh, no, I don't think I have. I mean, like, again, like, a lot of the time it's, for us, it's, it's lists and I kind of know what I'm shopping for, which is fine. Like I said, it takes the stress out of things. Uh, at, on the other side of it, it's all that communication is kind of stressful. But generally, uh, most of the time when I'm not in transition between jobs and things like that and I have the spare cash to spend, uh, I usually like to do at least one gift uh, for like brothers and stuff that just as a random thing, you know, uh, a t-shirt or like, you know, something like that, that I like a superhero t-shirt or something random like that, where I'm just like, where it's just like, I know they'll wear this. This is awesome. Like for Mike one year, uh, because it made sense. Uh, I got Vin like an Avengers t-shirt, but for Mike, uh, I got him a black thermal, uh, shield shirt. So, oh, cool. So, like, cool. He's, he's got like a black thermal shirt that with the shield emblem on the chest, nice. Nice. Uh, that he can wear under work clothes. And I was nice. like, yeah, I was like, he's pretty much an agent of shield. It's, it's the same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's I mean like t-shirts I always think is safe. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but you know, you, it's like you need t-shirts and why not have a little flair to it that the what you want. Um Right. And and even beyond t-shirts, I'm I've just saying a like, lot of t-shirts over the years. Yeah. Uh even beyond t-shirts though, just something kind of like fun like that that kind of puts the fun back into shopping where it's like I'm just going to buy something random that I hope they like. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. Cuz uh, versus all right, check off these two things off the list, guys. I got them. Mm. I feel, um, I mean, how about taking this in the negative direction though? Like, do we, why buy presents for Christmas? I mean, why do we do that? Like why, what, you know, some people say, why do I have to wait for Christmas to buy a present? Why, why, why can't I just do random gifts all throughout the year? And I, and I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I understand where they're coming from, but don't give into the corporate bullshit and right. uh, the, the, the marketing holiday and whatnot. But I mean, <laughs> It's I mean, why not? Like, what? What hard? So, like, do why don't you buy a Christmas present and then still buy random presents throughout the year? Why not? I mean, yeah, I, but I think that absolutely happens. Uh, maybe just not like on a regular basis, but I feel like I mean, people like in relationships and stuff. Like, I know when I was in a relationship, that was constantly happening, and my bank account disagreed with me. But I was just <laughs> like, hey, you know what? She would like this. I need to. I need to buy this for her, and um, stuff like that would happen. But. I mean, if you're saying that you want me to do something radical, like just bust out a Christmas card in March, I'll just be like, hey, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Look, I drew us on the cover. That's me as a gingerbread cookie, and that's you as an elf. It's, it's, it's June 1st right now, Danny. It's June 1st. <laughs> yeah, it's a surprise. That's how you sound for some reason. Yeah. Um, and this Christmas will be... Uh, a very merry Christmas. Um, maybe I can just bust out into Christmas music. I'll just start caroling in like mid July. I think you that'd be a great present. Like, <laughs> if you want to give me a present, I want you to sing. Sing me a song. July fourth. Instead of going out to a pool or a barbecue or anything like that, let's just start caroling at yeah. random pools and barbecues. <laughs> and not like Christmas carols, but like like updated, you know, like uh, like Blue Christmas from Elvis or something like that. <laughs> Even door. <laughs> like what the hell? That'd be awesome. Like Elvis carolers or something like that. It'd be fun, but on July Fourth, and hopefully we get free hot dogs and like a free beer or something because we just started caroling somebody's barbecue. <laughs> That's the gift that keeps on giving barbecue. Yeah, uh, and carols. Let me see. Yeah, we should do a winter barbecue. We actually no remember. Uh, uh, we did a barbecue. We could do a winter barbecue tonight, we, like God, with the temperature. We totally could. Yeah. Um, 
God, when we were just watching, we were barbecuing not too long ago. It was for late, Monday night football. Yeah, I it think, was like right? late November, and we were like, wow, it's 60 degrees out right now. It's barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> Chili dogs. That'd be a good gift to give someone. Actually, Steve got it for me one year. He got me a, um, what do you call it, hibachi grill? Oh, yeah. He got me one of those, a Weber uh, hibachi grill. It's a great gift. Yeah. See, I was like, yeah, this is great. I mean, this is a, that's a good, I'm trying to think of other gifts. Um, do you remember your favorite uh, childhood gift? Hmm, probably. <laughs> uh, to, and I guess I should say definitely because I I literally became like borderline addicted to it was Sega Genesis. Oh, you got that for Christmas. Yeah. Nice. Uh, which I remember now when I was still like kind of too young to game, Mike got Nintendo for his birthday. Yeah. And that was like the first uh, intro for me into video games, Mario Brothers Duck Hunter. Uh, so, same for a lot of us. Yeah, same for same for plenty of us. But I remember us getting the Sega for Christmas. I was a little bit older. I understood what was going on, and with 32-bit graphics, yeah, craziness. Uh, and yeah, uh, you can ask my brothers about it. Uh, I would literally like freak out and throw tantrums over games. Uh, oh sure, because I was like borderline addicted to Sega. <laughs> you know, but. When you had these separate tantrums, was it because like you were losing the game or they wanted to play the game? You're like, no, it's my game. Don't touch it. Uh, losing the game. <laughs> oh, losing the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, God, why? Oh, yeah, please tell me your mom has some like video of you of that, like freaking out over a Genesis game. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think they do. Uh, I don't know. I mean, again. Um, I Sega, Gen- Sega Genesis is a great Christmas gift. That's a good one. What about you? It's also video game related, believe it or not. Um, but I think it was um, a matter of timing. It gets a little. I don't want to get into it because it's 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 a little bit too uh, personal to share on 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 camera. But okay. uh, fair enough. Um, my dad always um, cut corners for gifts. You know, instead of like getting you Legos, he would get you building blocks or something like that. You know what I mean? Like these aren't Legos. You know, that's a bad example, but that's you know <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? And uh, one Christmas, uh, the game the game came out. Uh, the Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, one sixty four, and it's still renowned as one of the best games of all time. Of course, and that game, you know, was so, selling like hotcakes and everything like that. And on this particular Christmas, it was a rough Christmas. It was a tough Christmas that year. And I'm looking at my presents, and instead of getting like you know the cheap, you know, no name game that costs five bucks, I opened up my see Legend of Zelda, like. I actually got the big toy of the year. Like that was the one year, and not just that is also one of my favorite video games of all time. It was like this double whammy of just yeah. holy shit! I got this game on Christmas, and and the timing was just crazy because I've never gotten like the hot toy on Christmas. You know, right. it was always, and I never really necessarily wanted it. Uh, oh, was the, not Zelda, but I wanted Zelda, but not. All way every year, like I want what everyone else is having. It was never like that. It was just I never yeah. had like the hot new item, the hot new toy. And when Zelda came out, and I opened it, I'm like, holy shit! And my dad told me the story afterwards. He said, "Yeah, I went to look in the store, and it wasn't. It was completely sold out." And he, I just randomly asked the guy. I said, "You wouldn't have any Zeldas, would you?" The guy looks up and goes, "Shipment just came in 30 minutes ago. I'll get you a copy." And it was just holy cow, like that timing, right? Of that yeah. working out. So it was just it was just meant to be. And that's awesome. That game was, it's one of my favorites. The game's incredible. And it was just, again, it wasn't necessarily the game itself. It was just, you know, it, that one time it happened. That one time I got the big gift and one time I got the gift I wanted sort of thing. You know, it was just this great collaboration of awesome that happened. Yes. Yes. Um, well, and now, so it's funny too, right? Because when you're a kid, uh, you have all the the joy of like, oh my god, presents, and none of the strains of buying things for people, mm-hmm. which is a horribly selfish thing to say. But children are often selfish. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, I still remember like all the like my parents used to do on purpose. There'd be a bunch of wrap gifts under the trees, and then while we were sleeping at night, Santa would put out gifts outside of our bedroom door. So you'd walk out. Oh, right under, yes, you'd walk out in the morning, and you'd have all the wrap gifts downstairs. That you know, you were like, "Oh, the wrap gifts." But then when you'd walk out of your bedroom in the morning, there'd be like just three unwrapped gifts. Like, awesome. In front of your door. Yeah. Uh, so that stuff was always was always great. Oh, Saint Nicholas at yes. the door. <laughs> uh, was always great, and uh, obviously with nephew in tow. Uh, he is only two years old. He's getting there. 
but I can't wait for when he's just like one year older where he actually like is can talk, cogn- can talk <laughs> and is cognizant of what's happening and freaking out about gifts and Santa and all that stuff. That's what I'm really looking for. Yeah, to. that's gonna be those are gonna be fun Christmases. Like around like I think like the magical number is like seven or eight in my opinion. Like seven or eight yeah. is like, that's a special because they're uh, yeah, that's a special year, seven or eight for kids. At know. which point I will turn him to the dark side of the force. <laughs> Not if I get to him first. <laughs> Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Give me those Star Wars. Did Darth Vader scare you as much as he scared me? I love that damn song. Rate yeah. the beer. Let's rate the beer. Is that what we're doing? Is it time? It's time um, to rate the beer. Okay. Uh, well, as previously mentioned, this was my first introduction to Greenbush Brewing. Greenbush. Uh, it was a very Merry Christmas for me, the first time that I drank this beer. Um, this is actually in the category of black IPAs, uh, my favorite out of all of them. I will safely say 4.5 uh, for Greenbush's Anger. Whoa! This is... this is That's in, your second highest rating you given a beer. Yeah, this is... Uh, well, this one, ever since I've been introduced to it, has been one of my like favorite beers. Like Anytime I see the six-pack in stores, I'm like, ooh... I'm gonna grab one of those. Yeah, I'm um, I'm gonna give it a three and a half, but I was thinking about four. Um, the reason why I'm giving it three and a half instead of four is I've only had one beer throughout this one show, and at the very end of this beer, it's starting to get really, real pale taste in my mouth, a real, uh, very strong aftertaste that's left in my mouth after drinking a beer. Um, it's a great. Robust flavor definitely has the IPA element. There's something with this. What is this? It's a, uh, I don't know. It has some sort of spice in it um, that kind of leaves this lingering paley aftertaste in my mouth. Um, that it's okay. It's not. It's not repelling or anything like that. But it's it's just very. It's very bold aftertaste. Uh, not necessarily aftertaste, but like it's just this, that's left in my mouth. Um, so I'm gonna give it three and a half. That means good though. That's that's good in my book, and I yeah. like it. Um, and for me, no, it's the finish for it on me is you get a lot of that very, like the roast malt comes through a lot on the finish for me, uh, which is very like porterish. But at the same time, because they excessively dry hop this beer, I like it's a weird blend of two things that I really like, which is probably why I like the beer so much. So sure. I'm getting that kind of very roast flavor, but at the same time, kind of like that citrus oil like that citrus citrus flavor is like piney flavor from the oil of the dry hopping so you say it so much better than i do you say it so much better than i do well thank you for joining us for episode 12 of a brew with you merry christmas uh, and happy holidays if you liked what you heard and you would like to hear more please follow me at big deal blake on twitter danny adam b on, on instagram, instagram. And also, um, it's going to be coming around the corner. After Christmas, start of the new year, the Patreon page will officially be open. Awesome. And if you want to support the show, and there's going to be more shows coming up. I mentioned it last episode. Show is like, I'm almost, it's just there. It's so close. And I just need to just pop it out, and it's almost there. And then I have a third show coming out like in Like a January. Christmas goose. So if you like what you heard, and you're interested to see what's coming more, uh, please stay tuned. You're going to see it soon. Holidays picking up. I've been busy. And I'm, you know, I'm doing all this myself, so... He's being Santa Claus, people. I am being goddamn Santa Claus. It's a lot of responsibility. Yoda Claus. Yoda Claus. <laughs> Holy moly. What? What? I've what? officially turned. I'm no longer on the dark side. They have Yoda Claus. <laughs> yes! I converted you. Hey, buddy. I'm not going to see you, so ha- oh, happy, happy birthday. And Merry Christmas, buddy. Merry Christmas. And to you. And to, to you. you. I didn't get you anything, by the way. Oh, that's okay. You gave me anything? Uh, I had an idea of something to get you, but I'm still probably going to do it. It's just... Oh, might... but you didn't get anything yet, though. No. Okay, it's, so we're I have, I have an idea of, of <laughs> what of what I wanted to get you, but it just might arrive after Christmas. Well, yeah. you'll be gone anyway, so I wouldn't see you until so after Christmas. So I'll just Christmas. give you like a, a, a holiday present, a Christmas-New Year present. <laughs> All right? New Year, new me. Yeah. Yeah.